Welcome to a new video on automatic train control for any EEP layout using Lua. New version 2.3.2 is out and it uh, holds a new demo layout called SwinCombi which is used to demonstrate a new feature multiple ways, easy ways to define the allowed blocks and the introduction of random wait times. Until now, wait times could be specified per train per block, uh, but right now they can also be randomized between a minimum and a maximum value, still per train per block. The SwinCombi layout is a model railway layout in O scale originally published in the Railway Modeler magazine in 2012, 10 years ago. Uh, and it seemed like a fun layout to, yeah, to demonstrate a feature, uh, namely how to specify allowed blocks without a lot of repetition. And in this specific layout we have a couple of short tracks and we made a couple of short trains and obviously uh, they are the only trains that should be allowed here on these short blocks because the other trains are medium and long and they won't fit there. The medium trains can fit over here and of course also the short trains will fit over here and over here and long trains yeah they can only fit on the long tracks of which there are three and also the medium trains and the short trains will fit there uh, what we need to do is specify allowed blocks per train and this would lead to a lot of repetition of the same blocks and that is now made easier let's have a look this is the layout in eep and besides the tracks of the Swincombi station, a depot station is added. And the fun is that the trains uh, drive into this depot and then there are two choices. They can either drive back again to Swincombi station or they can drive forward and return to the station head first. And this makes for a lot of variation here at the station because 12 trains are going to drive around here, 4 short ones, 4 medium and 4 long ones and each of them can come into this station head first or tail first and you never know what is going to happen next. In order to create automatic train traffic we need to divide the layout into blocks. A block is a stretch of track that ends with a signal. Let's take this dead end here as an example. The signal is over here. This is the signal controlled by Lua to stop the train. And this is the entry sensor of the block to tell Lua that a train has entered this block. That is done by a Lua function call, but we can only place those function calls inside the sensors once we first have generated the code and ran it once in 3D mode. We will do that in a minute. Uh, there's something else that has done, uh, been done on this layout. There are a couple of signals for the exit of the dead end blocks and they are not controlled by Lua. Uh, they are just here for eye candy. Uh, we, we made this signal invisible and then when the train leaves, this signal is a visible signal, it's visible in 3D mode. And uh, it is connected to this signal via this uh, connection opportunity that is available here. Uh, signal 25 follows the uh, go and the stop state of uh, the signal 41 that is controlled by Lua. Oh yeah, and of course one more thing, one an important thing to do first is to place all the trains. On this layout we wanted to have 12 trains driving around and well uh, I have already placed them here yeah, they are already driving because the layout is running let me stop it um, first place the trains because then when you start the code generator it also automatically generates the list of trains that we want to have then you don't have to do that manually anymore 
Okay, uh, let's generate the code. First step is to open the uh, layout tool. The link goes in the description. Uh, click choose file and then uh, click the file of the layout that of course we first saved. And then yeah, we will recognize this is the layout we are looking for. The next step is to open the code generator and uh, there we have this option to exclude certain signals. Over here it says these signals are not used as block signals. Oh, that's what I want. Which ones? Well, 23 space 25. Why those two? Let's have a look at the layout. 23 is this uh, eye candy signal on this medium length train dead end. And 25 is also an eye candy signal. The other three visible signals, they are part of a two way block. So they need to stay in because they need to be translated into a block by the Lua code generator. Uh, I'm happy, let's uh, move back to the code generator and now press generate and what it does is it creates a lot of tables amongst which the trains table over here with the 12 trains that I already neatly had placed. It also tells me it has is ignored blocks 23 and 25 just like we just told it to do and it has created the complete route table with all the turnouts that need to be switched for every route from block A to block B. Isn't that nice? And it is also automatically placed in the clipboard, so I don't even have to copy it. Let's go back to EEP. Alright, so we are in 3D mode. This is important. We open the Lua script editor and then we paste the code in here. What I did here is to already edit it a little bit. The routes, I added some commands so that I can see which is which. And more importantly, there are two blocks where this block where this uh, oil tanker train is right now stationed. That is a two way traffic block. And I want the train also to be able to reverse here without first driving on. And also this uh, adjacent block uh, the, the train will stop here just before this turnout and I want it to be able to reverse and that's why there is a manual addition done over here. I have to add those reversal routes myself because the Lua code generator cannot know my intentions. I want this to happen so I add this route myself and also this route I added myself. And uh, of course you figure out which turnouts need to be switched and then all is fine. They are now two way traffic with a reversal. They were already two way traffic blocks because uh, there were uh, uh, signals at both ends. So that is easy. Um, let's reload the script now and uh, that will create the functions that we need in our sensors. So let's return to 2D mode now and the functions have been created. Now I can click a sensor, or right click it rather, and then add this function here called block control underscore enter block underscore and then the number of the block signal. That is the function call that needs to be placed in each and every of these yellow block entry sensors. That's something that has to be done manually. That's the only hard labor uh, to create the automatic train traffic. There is one little trick in this particular layout that is a little bit different. Here at the depot station we see additional sensors at the exit of the block. And uh, the function call inside is not enter block, but it is leave block. And uh, this is something that you can do when you like to and when it is safe to do. Uh, to speed up the traffic because the the train uh, uh, that wants to run into this block yeah, now already knows that this block is empty even before all these turnouts have been passed and the train finally reached the, uh, another block. So this is a trick that you can use. It is available 
uh, it is described in the user manual. We also have another little trick over here. Over here we see a speed marker or, or rather a vehicle contact. Um, and it is used to speed up the trains. The tick mark is set with store the current speed. And then uh, uh, a speed is mentioned not drive slower than 120. So this, the trains will speed up in this long section. And then over here at the very end of the section, when it enters the final block there, we have a similar vehicle sensor, uh, but this time it says restore the original speed. So if the train was driving 40, uh, it is temporarily driving 120 and over here it slows down to 40 again. Uh, you can use this trick or of speed up and slow down trains wherever you like. Well, I think we have done a good job with creating the code, but now we still have to create the uh, allowed blocks that we want to have. So let's have a look how to do that. And I prefer Notepad++. Here we are in Notepad++ and the... Uh, a code generator has generated some tables that it thought we would be able to use, but I simply deleted those and I entered my own tables. And I did it in a quite logical way. Here is a table called depot and it contains all the tracks that are part of the depot and also the three tracks that are the access and the exit of the depot. What I did is every train, as we can see here in the trains table, every train is allowed in the depot. And this is uh, the new feature of 2.3.2. We can now uh, uh, not only have one variable here in the allowed tables, but we can have a table of variables for the allowed tables. And as we can see for this long train, it is not only allowed in the depot, but also on the block specified in the table called long. And that table is uh, over here. Here is the table called long. And well, the long trains, they had the, less, the least blocks available to them because of their length. And they are mentioned over here. And then we also have a table for the medium sized trains. Those are a couple of more blocks where they are allowed. And we have uh, uh, also the short trains and those are allowed in these blocks. Uh, the block numbers, they are very easy to find. Uh, just go back to your layout tool and there uh, you can easily read out. Yeah, sometimes they are upside down, but read out all these block numbers so you know exactly what you want to do. Uh, short trains or medium trains over here and short trains only over there. That is how you create these allowed blocks tables. And there's another trick over here that's also a new feature. Uh, until now, all we could do is, is, is do this, uh, say uh, in block 52, we want the wait time to be 20 seconds. But the new feature is that we can uh, give it a variable name and that variable name can be a table and that table holds a minimum value and a maximum value, which means that Lua will now generate for us a random wait time in between these two values. So what I did for fun is create uh, time one and time two with different uh, values as we can see over here. And I used those in the allowed blocks tables. That's also a new feature uh, for this new version of the software. Well, we are happy with what we have done so far. So let's now finally uh, do a complete uh, copy and paste of this code into EEP. In 3D mode, just copy that whole code into the Lua script editor window and press reload. The code generator uh, starts with finding trains. Oh yeah, and there's something new also with find trains. We see one train still driving here. And the new feature is that it is giving now more information on what is happening. 
it says uh, 11 trains are found so far and there's one train called MID3 that is not yet found. That's quite easy to know or pleasant to know because uh, if you don't have this information, which was the case until now, then yeah, if you have 12 trains, you have to walk through that complete list and try to figure out which one was still missing such that you can drive it manually to a signal. But now the code already tells you which one is missing, which is of course quite handy. Well, it has almost reached its final signal and yeah, there it is, it is found. Uh, so uh, in, in one second we will get the message all trains are found. Yeah, find, tra find mode has found 12 trains. Well, let's uh, uh, switch this uh, uh, on and uh, oh, let me get rid of those uh, tooltips. Yeah, it's switched on and now we are going to see what is going to happen. Uh, All information of the waiting times uh, is over here. Yeah, there was a small little issue uh, in the English text. There is some German text uh, popping through, but that will be corrected in the next uh, update uh, version. Um, well, yeah, well, we can see some trains are driving. Of course, the fun of this uh, Swin Combi station layout is maybe to create a very nice Uh, scenery and yeah then have, have a look at those trains running in the into the station and running out of the station again and yeah uh, you never know what is going to happen next uh, which train is going to arrive and which train is going to leave it's all random 12 trains head first or tail first you never know what happens we can see the signals are switched also this signal yeah maybe it doesn't show very well on the video but this signal is now open and when the train has reached its next block then we will see that this signal is automatically closed of course uh, well maybe have a look at another camera there should be an east camera too uh, yeah, east view, let's see, yeah, that is more of an overview, well, this train is now uh, end of block, uh, yeah, that signal is now closing, so, yeah, all in all, uh, it was a nice project to build, and uh, the place, uh, actually, the, the most time, uh, most of the time is, well, after laying the track, of course, is placing the trains, figuring out what trains you like to have, and what engines, and what wagons, and then, placing them, driving them to a, uh, a signal, uh, that is time consuming, but that's also part of the fun, that is creating your model railway, so to speak. Well, this was it for this new Swin Combi uh, layout with actually three new features, the random wait times, the new way of having tables in the allowed blocks, and the new uh, find train mode that tells us which train it still has not found. Maybe see you back in the next video and in the meantime of course always have fun.